I'm, I'm told I, I have uh, the name of this institution uh, not quite correct, and I apologize. Uh, okay, so this is. Uh, Actually, th uh, this is a, a, from a, a, a paper that hasn't appeared yet, uh, honoring uh, Professor Helena Rashiova, uh, the uh, uh, Polish logician that they're uh, producing a uh, volume in her honor now. She died some years ago now. But it's uh, showing that parallel to the, the structure of a number of familiar modal logics, there are sub uh, logics of classical first order logic where the quantifier rules match the modal rules. So if you don't understand what all of that means, uh, let me talk for a while. And then if you don't understand what that means, uh, we have a problem. This is a quote from uh, Georg von Rick, uh, which uh, in some ways is an early observation of this. But uh, we want to look at the details. Uh, so, what, what, what I'll show you is a number of uh, classical, of uh, sublogics of classical logic. Uh, and the question, in part, is where do quantifiers and modalities diverge? What's, what's the essential difference between them? I mean, in some sense, if you know Kripke semantics, you can think of uh, modal operators as quantifying over possible worlds, you know, boxes for all accessible possible worlds. So it's like a universal quantifier. But where does the difference lie? Uh, okay, are we going to have problems here? Uh, so, okay, so that's what I just said. All right, so the, the basics here. Uh, just this, just to set the, the, the notation, uh, I'll assume uh, the standard propositional connectives. I'll assume both box and diamond. Uh, at the first order level, I'll assume uh, we have quantifiers but not modal operators. Uh, variables, but I won't bother with constants or function symbols. Uh, the, generally speaking, I'll take diamond as uh, defined from box this way and exists as defined from all this way, so I don't have to give quite so many rules or axioms. Uh, so, uh, also uh, some uh, simplifications. Uh, when, when doing first order logic, you, you uh, usually work uh, with a, a domain and a valuation or uh, some alternative terminology that assigns members of the domain to the free variables of your formula. And that's, that's fine, but it's, it's a kind of a, a nuisance. And so what I'll do is just write members of the domain into the formulas themselves. Uh, so kind of a pseudo formula that just says instead of x whose value is a, I'll just write a. Uh, so understood that way, for all x, phi of x is true in a domain D if phi is true for each thing in the domain. Uh, technically, this isn't a formula, but as long as we all understand how it's used, that's, that's fine. Uh, okay. Now, the thing is, box and for all certainly have some very obvious similarities. Uh, you have a rule of necessitation from X conclude box X. You have a rule of uni universal generalization from X conclude for all X. Uh, but uh, where, if the question is what are these things peculiar to quantifiers? Uh, they have uh, variables associated with them. Modal operators don't. And we'll see what that does. Now, um, I'll, I'll be using this step kind of familiar informal notation. If I write phi of x and later on phi of y, y is the result of replacing free occurrences of x uh, by y. Uh, and there's some technical stuff here that I, you're probably all familiar with, but just to establish the, the terminology, y is free for x in a formula if no free occurrence of x is in the scope of a quantifier y. So it means that uh, Substituting y's for x's isn't going to accidentally bind anything. Uh, and this notion of similarity, um, I want to work with the notion of quantification. And if change of variable uh, isn't going to hurt, you can think of them as really being the same formula where one is in disguise. So 
here's a formal definition of that. If x and y are different variables, phi of x and phi of y are similar, and other terminology has been used as well. If y is free for x in phi of x, and phi of x has no free occurrences of y. Now, that that uh, looks a little asymmetric, but in fact it isn't. Uh, if phi of x and phi of y are similar, phi of y and phi of x are similar, so it's a symmetric relation. Uh, it's a transitive relation. Uh, so essentially I won't distinguish between similar uh, formulas. They, they all express the same things. Uh, and uh, in, in any standard treatment of first order classical logic, if phi of x and phi of y are similar, for all x phi of x and for all y phi of y can be proved equivalent if you're in an axiom system, can be deduced equivalent if you're using a, a, a sequent calculus, have the same truth value if you're working semantically. So whatever you're working in, these will work out the same. But the thing is, I'm going to be working with very weak systems. Uh, and you don't have the machinery to prove that uh, equivalence. Uh, oh, this is a reference to where all that is defined. So what I'm going to do is, is take similar formulas behave uh, equivalently uh, uh, as a basic, one of our basic axioms. Um, all right. So with that out of the way, um, this is the thing that we'll be assuming in all of our logics. If phi of x and phi of y are similar, for all x phi x is equivalent to for all y phi of y. And I probably don't have to mention this again. Uh, but what this does say is our analog of box is going to be universal quantification and not universal quantification with a particular variable. Now, one could make some sense out of an analogy um, with a particular variable in there too, but you would really want some kind of multimodal logic, multi-agent logic, essentially one for each variable. So I'm not doing that. It's just the analog is with universal quantification, period. Okay. So uh, what I want to do is start uh, with the most natural, simple uh, modal and quantifier systems. Uh, so normal modal logics. And this uh, you're probably all familiar with. So uh, axiomatically, tautologies, box distributes over implications, sometimes called the K axiom. You have as rules, uh, modus ponens, and necessitation. Uh, these are understood to be axiom schemes, not particular axioms. So uh, that, that much, I'll come back to it in a minute, but that much axiomatizes the logic called K, the, the smallest normal modal logic. The first order analogs of that, well, you have the similarity axiom, which is always there in the background. Tautologies, universal quantification distributes over uh, implication, uh, modus ponens, and universal instantiation. So this is an exact parallel. Uh, so the, the definitions, the modal logic you saw is the smallest normal modal logic. It's called K. Uh, so the quantificational system you just saw uh, it's a subsystem of first, full first order logic. I'll call it QK, the, the analog of K. So here, here they are in parallel. Uh, this is what makes up K, and this is what makes up QK. There's that extra similarity thing, but otherwise they match up exactly. Now here are some uh, sample theorems. In K, uh, box distributes over and in QK for all distributes over and. And if you take uh, any standard proof of this in K and just replace the boxes by for alls, you'll get a proof of that. Uh, box doesn't distribute over an or, but box X or Y does imply uh, either one of them is possible or the other is necessary. Uh, well, in the same way, for all doesn't distribute over or, but if you have for all x uh, a disjunction, either one of them is existential or the other is universal in its holding. 
And again, you take a, any proof you've seen of this, uh, you'll get a proof of that by just replacing boxes by paroles. Uh, and by the way, using the similarity axiom oh, that, uh, uh, that for, for all distributes over implies also gives you this where y and z have suitable freeness properties. I'm just mentioning that in passing. But non-theorems. Well, uh, this is a non-theorem. For all x implies exists x. You should kind of expect it to be a non-theorem because in k you don't have box implies diamond. Uh, the question is, how would you show it's a non-theorem of QK? Uh, of course, failing to derive it is not good enough. Uh, uh, quantifiers don't commute. That's a little curious. Uh, in a little while, I'll verify these aren't provable. But you understand, in order to show something is provable, and that you have an axiom system, you give a proof. To show something is not provable, typically you provide a semantics and then provide a model where it fails. We're going to need a semantics. Uh, here are some more examples. Uh, okay, that, that uh, is one of the axioms. Uh, this, which is the analog of uh, box and implication, implies diamond, implies diamond, which is a theorem of K. Uh, this one, uh, universal instantiation, uh, for all x, this implication implies that doesn't hold. And by the way, there, there is no... I, 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 the analog for this uh, in the, the modal case would be something like box x implies x. You've lost a box. Uh, but this doesn't hold. Uh, oh, I was afraid of that. Uh, <laughs> my apologies. Uh, my hearing aid is telling me it's, the battery is going to go in about 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's see. This one, uh, all A's are B's, all B's are C's, implies all A's are C's. Uh, that's provable. Uh, this one, which is uh, a little more horrendous, uh, it's, a, it's a version of if a horse is an animal, then the head of a horse is a head of an animal. Uh, H is head, A is animal, and uh, T of X, Y is uh, X is on top of Y, and X is the head of Y. So uh, if uh, for all X, X is a horse implies X is an animal, so if a horse is, all horses are animals, then whatever it is you're talking about, if there's something that's, uh, that X is the head of, uh, and that something is a horse, then there's something that X is the head of, and that something is an animal. Uh, this is not provable. Uh, this is the same thing, except that you, outside for all x has been dropped, and I've instantiated this instead. You see, there's an s there and there. So if all horses are animals, and if this particular thing, s, is the head of a horse, then this particular thing, s, is the head of an animal. Uh, Yeah, okay, so I'm reading that here. This head of a horse is the head of an animal. Uh, that one is provable. So the differences are a little subtle here. Uh, okay, but before we get to semantics, there are some obvious extensions. Just as you start with modal k, uh, you can build it up to d, to t, to k4, and so on. So uh, some extensions here. kd uh, is box implies diamond. Uh, so QD will be for all implies exists, added to QK. Uh, KT is box X implies X. Uh, QKT is instantiation for all X phi of X implies phi of anything that's free for X. Uh, and axiomatically what, what we've got now is three subsystems of classical logic. Uh, except we know they are subsystems, we don't know these are proper yet. Uh, that QK is different than QKD and so on. For that we need to be able to prove some unprovability results. Um, so now it's time to look at semantics. Uh, okay, let's, let's start with the modal case, which is the most familiar. Uh, 
this is uh, a standard uh, Kripke model. That's the model. You have possible worlds. You have an accessibility relation. And you have a notion of uh, something being true at a world. Uh, uh, truth at a world at the atomic level is just arbitrarily specified. That's part of saying what a model is. Uh, Non-atomic truth uh, at each world and behaves truth table wise and so on. The, the main thing is uh, the way modal operators behave. And here's the, the, the standard thing. Uh, box X is true at a world gamma if uh, X is true at any delta that's accessible from gamma. So it's the familiar uh, box X is true at a world if X is true at all accessible worlds. And then you get different modal logics by putting different conditions on the accessibility relation. Uh, okay, so theorems of K are valid in all models like this. Theorems of KD are valid in all models with serial accessibility, which also has other names. But what it means is any world has some world accessible from it. Uh, theorems of KT are valid in all models where accessibility is reflexive. Okay, so what I want is analogs for these quantificational uh, uh, logics. Now, in a modal model, when you move to an accessible world, you move from necessary truth to truth. If box X is true at a world and you move to an accessible world, you're at a world where X is true. You've lost the box. Uh, so it's kind of a, a move to an accessible world is a kind of a denecessitation. Uh, I want models in which moving to an accessible world drops a quantification, which in, in, in effect is doing an instantiation. So moving to an accessible world should instantiate your universe and quantifiers. Okay, so uh, QK models. All right, so it's got a little more structure than before. Uh, the